This is Creation Workshop host, uh, the latest dev build as of January 1st, 2016. So this is build 2006. Been working with uh, Wes Gilster and the team there to get this working on the Kudo 3D Titan 1. Uh, it's working pretty well. So firmware auto detection and projector auto detection are both working and they will detect the Acer projector in the Titan 1 and the Marlin firmware there. The setup for the printer is basically in a printer profile, you've got to configure the serial ports, there's auto detect modes. Auto detect is a little bit slow since it's got to go through the ports, so I have it set manually here. It'll still auto detect the firmware type and the, uh, and the projector type if I manually give it the serial ports. This is running on a Raspberry Pi, of course, and so this is a web interface on my Windows printing tablet over my in-home Wi-Fi to the Raspberry Pi running the Creation Workshop host software. Um, the, although this software was originally intended to be just a printing version for CW Creation Workshop scene files, what I'm going to show today is a completely standalone workflow, uh, meaning there was no Creation Workshop involved. I am using the built-in um, slicing and printing capabilities or rather slice control capabilities I won't actually be using as STL slicer today. When you set up the printer, you also need to create then a set of uh, controls for it. When you're going to use Creation Workshop to control the print sequence, and in this case I'm going to feed Creation Workshop a set of PNG slice files and have it slice up, uh, sorry, have it print those files, you need to define a couple of things. You have to have the uh, G-code templates to uh, let CWH know how to lift and lower, especially since the Titan one has this passive peeling system. We need to control that exactly. So I've got the G-code bit in here. You can, uh, this is better described on the wiki page. There's also a set of JavaScript formulas to compute based upon the square millimeters of surface area what the lift and lower should be and I, I think that should be hopefully okay and then you have some ink configuration here um, exposure time for the first layers in this case I've got just one and in this case it's set to zero right now um, and that'll give me one exposure layer and then the regular exposure time I'll be using the GC3D uh, tough resin that I bought on eBay and then you start the printer as I did before I started scrolling through this. Once you've started the printer, then we've got controls. Uh, we can turn on the projector with this button here. We hear the sound go off. And then I can lift and lower the z-axis with this. Now, there are a few things about this that are a bit tricky. Right now, this is configured uh, on a generic basis. So you see there's x, y, and z here. Um, and then there's home buttons in the middle. The home buttons will execute a G28 command. On a stock Titan 1, you don't want to ever run a G28 command. G28 command asks the Z axis to go down until the end stop is triggered. The Titan 1 does not have an end stop, so it'll just keep going down forever. Don't hit that button. In my case, I've recompiled my version of Marlin to uh, disable the end stop so that G28 does nothing. Um, and I've asked Kudo 3D to make that change to their version. The other thing is that the software Z mechanism for the Titan 1 is a little bit uh, tricky. It involves a special sequence where you have to, under the hood, execute a G92 to set the Z height to a certain amount, then go back down to zero, and then keep doing that repeatedly. This is automated in their version of Project Layer in the, in the Titan 1 host software so that you just hit these buttons to go up and down. In my case here, I would have to enter that G-code manually, and so I'm not going to zero my build plate this way. Instead, I'm going to lift up a bunch. high enough for me to get my plate in and I'm going to put my plate in here and then I'm going to lower down 30, 40. But I'm not going to go all the way back down to zero, that might be too low. Oh, actually, it's not. So I'm down at software zero, I can't go anymore. 
And so what I'm going to do in this case to zero my build plate, rather than manually ent entering like G92, Z1, and then you know G1, Z0, and keep going back and forth with that manually, doing that in here would be kind of onerous. Uh, I'm gonna disable the motors, and I'm just gonna move the Z axis manually uh, and lower it until I hit zero the normal way. So this is not that different than what you would do the, for a uh, uh, the standard way, except that I am going to use uh, use the uh, use the manual lever that I'll show you when I reposition cameras. So the motor's disabled. I have the plate loose. And so I'm going to manually lower this down until it feels fairly firm. And then I'll lock it in place by enabling the motors again. So now this guy isn't moving anywhere. It's a little low. this guy up and we're good to go all right so now this is at zero and moment four let me just double check that yep so I'm at Z zero that means I can go up by 10 I'll go down by 10 and if I keep going down, nothing happens. Oops, okay, I didn't want to quite go that high. So let me, uh, this cover over and then I'll do the standard deal with putting the resin in A little bit more. I probably put about a hundred millimeters to start. Milliliters to start. All right. Put resin in there, and then I'll put this back down to zero. Okay. Bubble's getting chased out. Let me put this up a little bit. All right, that looks good. Then I'm going to start the print job. 
This may or may not go well, we'll see, because I haven't tested the functions with real resin before. So let's see what this will do. I've got uh, kind of a um, an S-curve for lift speed and kind of a linear for lift distance on this slice of zip images. So essentially I uploaded into the UI a set of slices which you can see on this screen here, printable files. So this is a zip of slice images and I've got my projector ready and I'm going to hit the print button. And this will then create a print job which we'll see going on here. And I've got a bunch of status here momentarily. Now it's beginning to expose my first layer. which we can then briefly, if I don't make you too nauseous, I'll give you a look from underneath. And here we are exposing that first layer. So let's take a look at what this UI does during this process, and then uh, we'll just go to print. So that sound on the side is a lifting sequence. Um, this the function is set to go eight seconds for the sorry eight millimeters for the very first layer at fifteen millimeters per minute, and then for the rest of the print it'll go based on the function of surface area. So now that the first layer is done, we can see it's figured out progress, one out of 346, figure out the last slice time, and now everything is controlled by the functions. The lift distance is controlled by the functions, and the lift speed is also controlled by functions. So here's the lift sequence. Seems like the lift distance is just barely enough. Hopefully this will go reduce as we get higher and I no longer have so much uh, vacuum force at the top. All right, now let's go to time-lapse.
Okay, so had a little bit of a problem. Looks like I need to change my function a bit. Um, the control worked, as you can see from the time lapse. Um, but what we can see is that I do not have enough. Um, I don't have enough uh, lift. I'm not sorry, not enough lift. I don't have enough exposure when I'm starting out the print in some of the dimmer areas of the bulb. So the we need more exposure lower down when the separation forces are greater um, at the bottom. And then we can use less at the top. So the exposure time I have set is good for you know the generalized setting. But it looks like I'm going to need a function that ramps up the or ramps down the exposure gradually. So I'm at like 40 seconds for the attachment layer, and then I probably need to ramp that down gradually rather than going straight from 40 to uh, 7.3 at the bottom. That way I can make sure that the attachment layers are not too thick, um, but also so that I have, a, I have enough exposure at the bottom to, to firmly build the base. Uh, we can see that later on in the print, everything ended up reattaching later on uh, so I shouldn't have too big of a block at the bottom of the vat um, but otherwise this printed at the correct has the correct dimensions at least um, and you know this problem here doesn't really have anything to do with the creation workshop host um, I just need to get some of the functions working uh, a bit better